We're back to our questionnaire today and we're gonna answer another one of those crazy questions to see if we may have a drinking problem. The thing about that questionnaire, and I know I've kind of addressed it before, is that if we do have a problem with alcohol, we have a problem with denial. And so we're looking at these questions and we're kind of mixing them up in our own mind, thinking of excuses or you know maybe stretching the truth, maybe even not being able to see the truth about our drinking and we can't get the right answer on the question. <clears throat> but whoever creates these questionnaires, they know a little bit about alcoholic thinking because you only have to get two, maybe three right and you're in. You're one of us, one of those people that needs to look at their drinking and see if maybe they have a problem. I'm Kathy McLeish and I'm just trying to raise a little awareness, spread a little bit of information so that if you may think you have a problem, you can get into the solution because that is a wonderful place to be. I've been sober for 37 years and I got sober at 27 and it was the best thing I could have done after 10, 12 years of crazy drinking. So if you're surrounded by people that drink, if that's in your family, or if there's just one or two people in your life that you don't know what to do with because of their unmanageable drinking practices, then you can salvage a little bit of information from these videos and take care of yourself. You can't change them. Unfortunately, they have to make those decisions themselves, but you can do things in your life to, to keep yourself at peace. So this question, how about do you have to drink a little bit more to get the effect that you want with alcohol? Or if you are like, I'm stopping at four drinks, are those four drinks no longer getting you to the place you want them to get you? Then you're building up a tolerance. I built up a tolerance to alcohol so that it took more and more alcohol to get me to where I wanted to be, how I wanted to feel, the freedom, the relaxed feeling of, the powerful feeling of, you fill in the blank. So anyways, I can remember back when I was like a sophomore in, in high school, and I sophomore, junior, just, just really started to drink on a regular basis every weekend. And I was at some kind of party, and I drank a lot. I'm not sure what I drank. It did not you know, agree with me, and I either blacked out or passed out in a snowbank. My girlfriends found me. I didn't even have shoes on, wasn't aware of that, and I'm, anybody knows me, I hate to be cold. But they kind of like gathered me up and took me inside and got me sober before you know I had to go home, or at least sober enough. So that is a no tolerance kind of situation. I'm just starting to drink, you know, alcohol can kick my butt if I'm not careful. And so I've got things to learn. If I'm an alcoholic, I'm, I'm gonna get in this school of learning and alcohol is still gonna be my friend for a little bit if I know how to manipulate how much and when. That's not a good thing. Anyways, I go off to college and I can come back and drink with those same friends two years later, three years later max, and I can drink all night long and at the end they can't even tell if I've been drinking. So what has happened, you know? Have I improved? You know, tolerance is usually a really good thing. If I can tolerate, learn to tolerate a baby crying, if I can learn to tolerate the boss at work, it will serve me well. So learning to tolerate, building a tolerance to a lot of things, even like when you're exercising or playing a sport, if you can, you know, build up the strength to do something longer and better, that tolerance is a good thing. In drinking, Tolerance is not a good thing. Tolerance is a sign that your body is getting adjusted to the amount of alcohol that you're putting in your system, in your bloodstream, going to your mind, getting these effects that you wanna have. It's, it's building up a tolerance and you're gonna to have to put more alcohol in your body to get the same effect because you no longer feel as good as fast when you're out drinking. So these are some of the signs that I went through um, that I can look back now and say, oh my gosh, I was building up a tolerance. One, I hit a lot of my drinking. I would drink before I went out with people because I knew whatever was going on, there was not gonna be enough alcohol to get me from point A, sober, to point B, where I wanted to feel really good. So I have to pour in some drinks before I ever head out to the relatives, to the family gathering, to the work you know, um, activities. I'm just gonna need more alcohol to get where I want to go. I also do this thing where maybe I switch what I drink, okay? So if I was drinking four beers and that was an okay thing, 
And then now I'm looking at it and it's like, if it takes me six beers, man, that's a lot of calories and I'm gaining some weight. And, you know, sometimes this is a woman thing. It can be a guy thing too. You know, you can't pack down 12 beers, you know, in the evening without looking a little suspicious. So I might change what I'm drinking. I can remember I went to wine at one time in my, you know, housewife, alcoholic, hiding what I drink days. And here's a story, so I'm hiding what I drink. So this would sound so, it will sound so ridiculous, but it, it made sense to me. It was cold and it was in the winter and we had two bags of mulch in our garage. And we were the kind of people that we would like, think about doing some things to improve our house, but we never like follow through and get there. And so we had these big bags of mulch. And so I emptied some mulch out and I shoved these half gallon wine bottles down into the mulch and I would just go get them as I needed it, drink the wine, replace the bottles when I was done with those two bottles and on and on and on through cold months of winter. Anyways, so <laughs> one time, um, unbeknownst to me, the mulch had fallen over, the wine bottle had broken, and this white wine had like gone all over, leaked behind the refrigerator in the garage, this, you know, sugary, sweet wine, and cleaned up as much as I could. And then, as we headed into spring, you know, this had happened, and we have this ant invasion, crazy, crazy ant invasion. And my husband is just like, what the hell? Why do we have ants all over the garage? And I am like, I have no idea, but I will definitely call the exterminator. And so the wine and the mulch, those are the kind of things that somebody that's hiding their drinking, when their drinking escalates and they have built up their tolerance, they need more. And the reason I had moved to wine is because I started checking bottles and seeing what is the alcoholic content because I need more for less. I need to get there faster without chugging my alcohol and wine, you know, was the next thing to come behind beer. I got to the point where I had a diehard girlfriend that drank with me really close to the end. And she came up with this idea that we would make homemade uh, Kahlua. And I loved Kahlua. And I don't need to talk about alcohol. But anyways, if you fermented the Kahlua, it would um, be more potent. It would have more alcohol content. That is what she read. That is what she'd heard. I don't know. We could never leave it long enough to ferment. So we would make those recipes and then eventually we would just need the vodka that was in that recipe and we would drink the Kahlua, fermented or not. I don't think I ever tasted fermented Kahlua from that recipe. But what I had going on that I didn't realize is I want more faster. I want more alcohol in my system faster so that I can get the same effect that I used to get with a couple of beers, with a glass of wine. You know, you see the, the woman that is acting tipsy after she's had a, a glass of wine, she didn't even finish her second glass of wine. It makes a practicing drinker alcoholic crazy when people don't finish their drinks. You know, back when I was drinking, this is like disgusting. We would have a party in our house. Here's another thing you do if you build up a tolerance. You buy cheaper alcohol for yourself, but if you're having something that is social or inviting people over, you have a higher priced alcohol for them. That is a sign because if I am only drinking, if I'm only a social drinker, usually it's in the budget for me to buy whatever I want, when I want, and not worry about the cost if I'm a social drinker. But when it gets to be a problem, the price is a problem is when I can't control my drinking anymore and I need a lot. And so I would have the standard where if we would have a get together back when we were still able to function a little bit with my first husband, I would buy a higher price beer. And then when it was just us, it would be like black label, fast off, fall staff, yeah. Anyways, so one evening we have this party. Everybody leaves, okay? Everybody that was there was not an alcoholic. So I'm cleaning up after the party and there's all these more expensive beers, I think it was Michelob at the time, that have not been drank. And it's like, so we got partial beers. You know what an alcoholic does when there's partial beers left in their home? Well, okay, I won't speak for all of you. I will just speak for myself. I would finish those beers. And you know what I will never forget is at one point I picked up a beer and chugged it and the person had used it as an ashtray. So, there you go.
that is a sign that my drinking has gotten out of control. I'm finishing other people's beers and they used it as an ashtray. So I'm basically chugging ashes. Don't even realize it until I hit the butt of the cigarette. Tolerance. I have built up a tolerance and I need more. So that can look really pretty when you start. You're not drinking beer, you're just drinking wine. And then I go from wine to vodka, and it's not too bad because I'm putting vodka in my orange juice, you know, it doesn't look so bad. Uh, vodka can almost go anywhere because it doesn't smell and it doesn't have a color. And I don't wanna give people ideas about drinking more, but I want to put like, you know, a light, shine a light on our drinking and when we build up a tolerance, how it changes and we may not even notice. So if you saw when your child came home from a graduation party and he was a little tipsy and you were a little, oh dear, did he drink? He drank, he drank a little too much. And then he comes back from college three years later and he can handle anything that you give him and you're thinking, oh, you know, now he doesn't have that same problem. No, he doesn't. He has a bigger problem because he's built up a tolerance for alcohol and he can handle his drinking. A lot of times you can't even tell once a person pet crosses that line, they can be so drunk they are almost in a blackout or they are in a blackout. They're still functioning. They are still moving around the house. They are still, can still be driving. They can still be having a conversation back and forth with you. And then the next day, you wonder why they don't remember. And that is because they passed over the line of drinking heavily that evening, going into a blackout, but still being a functioning alcoholic. So that tolerance, that tolerance that we build up can be very deceiving because it seems like the alcoholic is still handling their drinking. But what they've done is they've just built up a tolerance for that alcohol and they can handle a lot more alcohol without falling down, without getting sick, you know, without embarrassing you, you know, but that doesn't mean it's a good thing. So I don't know if that helps. I think that just knowing the information, it doesn't, you know, empower any of us to control anybody else, but it does give us an awareness of what is going on. And sometimes you're, you, you could be around an alcoholic and you think you're going, you're going crazy. They acted like this then, and now they act like that. So does it mean they're getting better? Does it mean that they're getting worse? And you know, if you know a little bit about how alcohol works, alcohol works in the body, you can understand a little bit about these phases of a drinker and how they're going through and getting worse when they may even appear like they're in control. So Kathy McLeish, thank you for you know subscribing, coming on here, trying to raise your awareness so that you can be part of the solution instead of part of the problem. And you can have some answers for somebody that comes into your life. Not that I have all the answers. I only have the experience of my own you know, drinking and my own recovery and the people that I have walked that walk with for the past 37 years. But thank you for subscribing and I'll see you soon.